Welcome to the Tony Awesome Fishing Show. This short film I'm going to show you how to make a rig, terminal rig, fishing on the seabed for taupe. For those of you fishing in different countries, the taupe is a, I want to call it a bottom dwelling shark. It's not a lemon shark, a black tip, a tiger, a bull, dusky. It's not that type of shark, but it is related to the shark. It does have teeth. It will bite through 20 pound mono. You might get away with it on 30 pound mono. Generally, if you get a 40 pound tote, it's going through 50 pound mono. 150 pound mono to 250 pound mono, you can catch tope on. I know, I've done it. But generally, people like to fish a wire trace, a short wire trace of tope. This is how I make mine up. And this is what you're going to use if you're going to make up a tope trace or indeed anything for, say, a bottom feeding shark. You can get two types of wire. Actually, you can get three types of wire. You can get cable wire, which is uncoated. You can get, which this one is, a plastic coated wire, which people do say if a, te a shark gets his teeth in there and strips that down the ball, it gets it in a tight ball and will snip off the wire. Now, that's mostly for big shark. For taupe, you should get away you know, with using... Uh, plastic coated wire. I'm not a lover of it, I have to say I like to use uncoated wire myself. You can also use single strand, which is probably used more, more, more I suppose in America, uh, Canada, those sorts of places. Uh, single strand can catch some big fish. I have caught some big sharks on multiple sections of single strand, all haywire twisted together. But generally, is, this is what you want for British tote fishing or fish up to let's say 100 pounds I think you'd get away with. This in fact is 40 kg breaking strain. You're gonna need some of these brass crimps, nickel covered brass shrimps, er, uh, shrimps? Nickel covered brass crimps. Try reading it upside down and looking back to front of the camera, it's not that easy. You're gonna need a plastic bead. You're gonna need here a swivel, and that one is a 1-0. It's a very basic uh, swivel there, a lead, a boom, a running boom, takes a lead, and two hooks. I would use, let's say, an 8 -o hook. This one's called a meat hook. I'm going to use an 8 -o hook for, say, fillets of mackerel, for, or for whole mackerel. If you're using a bigger bait, go for a 10 -o. These are very, very strong hooks, those ones. There are plenty of other makes out there. There's loads of models and patterns of hooks. No question about that. This one's, I've used it before. I've had big poor wiggle sharks over 450 pounds on these meat hooks. They're okay, you know. Um, Use what you fancy, but make sure it's a strong wire hook. Our other recommendation is, if you look there, it's a very, very big, from the back of the shank of the point to the tip of the barb is several millimetres. You've got to make a big hole in the jaw and to get that hook to go in down to the bend if you're fighting the fish. I personally do it a lot of my hooks now. I crush these barbs down because there will still be a little speck there to hold it in. As long as you keep tight to the fish, you'll be okay. So for tope, let's say, probably six foot trace. They like to use a six foot trace because you do not want the tope running up the line, rolling it, wrapping the main line, the fishing line around his body, and then his rough skin will go through it. So give five, six feet would be good, I would say. Going to cut this. It looks like it's going to explode everywhere on me. For that, I'm going to be using cutters here. The tool I'm going to be using on these crimps is a cup to point tool. I don't know if you can see that in there is a cup just there, look, you can see the cup shape to the point. I'll open it up. So that point pushes into the cup. See if these cut, I've used them so many years, it might not cut. It won't cut because they're so blunt from years ago. These will. And choose the right size sleeve because all different wires are different diameters. This in fact is size one. You want to make sure it goes through that single sleeve. This is a single, it's not a mini double sleeve. It goes through the single sleeve but it also goes back through it because it's going to be crushed down those two on top of each other like that. And then being very, very slippery, I do like to use what they call the Flemish eye, which is basically a double overhand knot. Once you've gone through the eye of the hook and the swivel, pull it down to about there. You go back out through the loop like that, but go through twice. It's just when you get bigger fish, the bigger fish you get is worth doing it. And this is very, very slippy, sort of skiddy plastic nylon, whatever they call it, coated wire. Slide the tag end back up inside there, hoping you can see this, guys. There. Can you see it? Push it back in, roll it right down nice and tight. You can actually pull one strand, it slacks the other off, push the sleeve down a bit further, get a pair of pliers, or in this case, the tip of the cutter, so we're gonna cut that off anyway. Cinch it down a bit more, 
cinch it down a bit more, you're making that loop there a lot smaller. Then you get your cup to point tool. And I'll turn it out the other way for you. Hopefully you can see this. Gonna get it in there, right in the middle. Get it in the middle there and really give it a good ooh, squeeze down like that. And you can see the shape is crushed the wire together. Snip the tag end off. Bingo. Don't throw it on the floor, it'll go in your foot, put it in a waste bin somewhere, and that is the hook end done. And now I need to put a swivel on the other end. It's a repeat the procedure. On goes the sleeve. There's my swivel. I go through once. There, you can see the overhand hopefully there. Gonna go through once through the loop. I'll leave it quite big this time so you can actually see it go through twice. Watch you don't push the wire into your finger, it will spike you. Missed it that time. Probably left the tag in a little bit short, but then I'm always tight. I don't want to waste one millimetre of wire. Pull it down, use pliers for this, not cutters, but I can't be bothered to go and get them, to be honest, guys. See, they're much, much neater. And then just slide, here it comes, bosh. That's the other end, over the tag end. I tend to sort of roll it as it goes and it comes out the other end. Push it right down, nice and tight. Cut to point tool. I'm hoping you can see all this, who knows. Heave away, crush. And there we go, snip the tag end off. So that's the trace done there. So that's eight hook, single barrel crimp there. So five, six feet of wire. There's my barrel shoulder at the other end. Imagine this yellow line is the rod line. I'm gonna put on my running boom, which you do want. On goes the running boom, just like this. You can see it slide up and down. On goes a bead. It can be a buffer bead, or it could be just any bead. In fact, sometimes you don't need a bead at all. I then tie it on. Now, what you do want with a tote, you don't want them feeling any resistance from the lead. So that's the reason you need to use a running beam, or running bo boom rather. Teeth, as supplied by the dentist. Oh, was that a piece of gold for that? No, more like plastic now me. Snip off the tag end. Okay, so that is effectively what it looks like. Here's, pretend this is the rod line, it comes down like that. I'm going to put my lead on, the clip, dead easy these rigs, you can make these up, but they're easier making them up at home than they are on a boat pitching around, rolling around. There you can see all this lot drops down to the seabed, just like this, there you go, baits down here, the fish runs off, but rather than, let's short this up, rather than as he runs away, he's dragging this chunking lead along with him, it can slide, so the lead could for a while stay on the seabed and the fish pulls away like this, and as the tote pulls away, and they're notorious for running with the bait, it pulls away like this, you get the noise on the clicker, the line going out, and then you lock up, you strike it. As a general rule, they say, the tote run, turn the bait, swallow it, and you hit them on the second run. You now you hit them when they're running, I think, you know, otherwise you're gonna have a deep hook throated fish. If you miss it, I always tend to think, even on a big bait like this, it's probably either a different species, or it might not even be a tope at all. Might be just a small tope. But I don't know what you could give it. 10 seconds, I'm just saying. In my mind, count to 10 seconds. I wouldn't leave it like the old fashioned way. He said, oh, let it run and when the run stops. Listen, some tote grounds, it won't stop. It's going. Good fighters, great fish to catch in shallow water, especially British tote fishing. And this rig, guys, can be used anywhere in the world for any bottom dwelling species of size and strength. Thanks for watching the Totally Awesome Fishing Show rig section I'm going to call it. We'll see you again and I'll have these chaps snipping away like mad.